Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. A terror attack was thwarted earlier today when a Palestinian assailant attempted to stab an IDF soldier at the Gush Etzion Junction. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says real progress has been achieved in the Iranian nuclear talks taking place in Vienna. The United Arab Emirates was subject to a deadly drone attack earlier today in a strike claimed by the Iranian-backed Houthis in Yemen. A terror attack was foiled earlier today when an IDF soldier responded to an attempted stabbing attack by opening fire toward the assailant, neutralizing the imminent threat. According to details from a preliminary investigation, a Palestinian assailant armed with a knife exited a vehicle at the Gush Etzion Junction, where IDF troops are permanently stationed to secure the busy motorway and attempted to stab a soldier. The soldier immediately responded by opening fire toward the attacker and neutralized the threat. No injuries were reported among the IDF troops. According to the IDF spokesperson's unit, troops are currently pursuing the assailant's vehicle, whose driver fled the scene. Turning to Colleyville, Texas, in the United States, where an Islamist terrorist identified as Malik Faisal Akram was neutralized by an FBI hostage rescue team after nearly 11 hours of negotiations aimed at securing the release of four Jewish hostages. Uh, this morning, at about 10.41, we received a 911 call uh, regarding a disturbance at uh, si the 6100 block of Pleasant Run, which is Congregation Beth Israel. It's our local Jewish synagogue. At that time, uh, they were having services, and those services were being broadcast uh, across Facebook and uh, across Zoom. And we began to get information that a gunman had entered the uh, synagogue and taken uh, four individuals hostage. At that time, uh, patrol resources responded to the area. Uh, we called out our SWAT team, our North Tarrant Regional SWAT team, who responded. We set up a perimeter, and we began to evacuate the houses that were in the local area. The Islamist terrorist, who was identified by authorities as a 44-year-old British national, was said to have traveled to the United States legally and in what authorities assess to constitute a premeditated hostage-taking incident, the terrorist demanded the immediate release of incarcerated Al-Qaeda operative Aifa Siddiqui. According to law enforcement authorities, as part of an interagency operation, the first hostage was released by the terrorists six hours into the incident, and after approximately 11 hours, an elite hostage rescue team out of Quantico, Virginia, breached the synagogue and rescued the three hostages while neutralizing the threat. Thankfully, none of the hostages were physically harmed. It is interesting to note that while a presiding assessment indicates that the Islamist terrorist acted in a premeditated manner, special agent in charge of FBI Dallas maintained that the incident was not specifically related to the Jewish community. We'll continue to investigate his contacts. Our investigation will have global reach. We have been in contact already with multiple FBI legats to include Tel Aviv and London. Uh, we've been working closely with Secure Community Network and the Jewish Federation, and uh, I want to continue to do that, and we will continue to do that uh, throughout the country. Uh, we, we, we do believe from our engagement with this subject that he was singularly focused on one issue, uh, and it was not specifically related to the Jewish community, uh, but we're continuing to work to find motive, and, and we will continue on that path. Meanwhile in Jerusalem, during the government's weekly cabinet meeting, Prime Minister Naftali Bennett voiced Israel's gratitude to U.S. law enforcement agencies for their swift response and courageous action. This morning I received the good news that the hostages and congregation Beit Israel in Colville, Texas have been rescued. I want to thank the law enforcement agencies for their swift response and courageous action that brought the hostages home safely to their loved ones. This event is a stark reminder that the dark forces of anti-Semitism still exist. We must and we will fight it. To the Jewish community in the US and diaspora Jewry around the world, I say, you are not alone. 
We're one family and we stand strong and united together. Meanwhile, in the American city of Philadelphia, President Joe Biden stressed that he wanted to reassure Jewish communities throughout the United States that the federal government has the capacity to deal with a rising tide of anti-Semitism in general and attacks in particular. I wanted to make sure we got the word out to synagogues and, and places of worship that we're not going to tolerate this, that we have this capacity to deal with assault on particularly the anti-Semitism that has grown up. The U.S. president went on to reject circulating claims by some officials that the hostage-taking situation was merely connected to the Islamist assailants' demand to release the incarcerated al-Qaeda terrorist, Pakistani national Aifa Siddiqui. This was an act of terror. This was an act of terror. And it not only was uh, related to someone who had been arrested, I might add, 15 years ago and been in jail for 10 years. The idea is it was something new. Turning to Washington, where Dr. Celeste Wallander, who partook in a Senate Armed Services Committee hearing on her nomination, stressed that while she shares the goals and commitments advanced in the Global Posture Review, if confirmed, she intends to do an evaluation within the Department of Defense to make sure that U.S. forces and partners contending with the Islamic Republic of Iran throughout the Middle East are properly resourced and postured. I share the goals and commitments advanced in the Global Posture Review, including an effective counterterrorism posture in the Middle East and robust deterrence against Iran. Our force protection mission is also essential particularly in the face of attacks by Iranian proxies in Iraq. A lot of our focus in public tends to be on Iran's nuclear weapons program, and that is, you know, concerning. But we can't uh, lose sight of the fact that Iran is actively supporting groups that strike at American uh, personnel installations and capabilities in the region and undermine our ability to responsibly implement counterterrorism uh, missions in the region. Um, if confirmed, I will focus on the partner relations in the region to work with them to make sure that we are doing everything necessary to counter um, Iran's activities and to undermine them, but also to do an evaluation within DOD to make sure we are properly resourced and postured. Dr. Wallander, a top security expert on Russia, who is considered for a position that practically performs duties of principal advisor to the Secretary of Defense on international security issues, they relate to Europe, Russia, the Middle East and Africa, also voiced her personal objection to any relief of sanctions currently imposed on the Ayatollah regime in Tehran. Turning to Moscow, where Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov insisted that nuclear negotiations in Vienna are making real progress. Оптимистичную позицию, там есть реальный прогресс, там есть реальное желание, прежде всего, между Ираном и Соединенными Штатами понять конкретные озабоченности и понять, как эти озабоченности могут быть учтены в общем пакете. Это может быть только пакетное решение, как, собственно, и сама иранская сделка, совместный всеобъемлющий план действий был пакетным решением. И в Вене сейчас переговорщики, они очень опытные, они проникли уже в самые детали этой переговорной материи. Они делают сейчас вам неплохой прогресс, я стучу, стучу по дереву, но мы рассчитываем, что договоренность будет достигнута. Moscow's top diplomat continued by asserting the need for quiet diplomacy, while further noting that Russia managed to convince the West to abandon an approach to connect Iran's nuclear file with its ballistic missile program and aggressive behavior throughout the Middle East. Тут нужна тихая дипломатия, и она, еще раз повторю, работает. Слава Богу, что удалось преодолеть ситуацию, когда Запад стал выдвигать условия возобновления этой иранской ядерной программы, условия, касающиеся наложения ограничений на ракетную программу Ирана, 
чего не было в СВПД, и условий, касающиеся его, так сказать, поведения в регионе. Мы были категорически против, это нечестно было бы, если бы такой подход возобладал, потому что речь шла о СВПД. It is important to highlight that on Saturday, Iraqi forces reportedly thwarted an attack by Iranian proxy militias on the Balad Air Force Base, which houses U.S. contractors servicing Iraqi F-16 fighter jets. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. Separately, in the United Arab Emirates, three people were killed when unmanned aerial vehicles laden with explosives targeted three fuel trucks near Abu Dhabi's airport earlier today. The deadly attack was later claimed by the Iranian-backed Houthis in Yemen at a time when the Saudi-led coalition, which the UAE is a part of, is managing to regain some lost territories in Maghreb governorate as hostilities are seemingly intensifying. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you this evening to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up South Africa in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shavuot Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.